everybody, we have a change in schedule, but we have upgraded. So we are thrilled. We are thrilled. We have in the house with us g Easy, who's going to be dropping his album on June 23rd. And if you don't know about him, your kids already do, but you'll be hearing about him too, because he's going to be the big thing this summer. So we're going to welcome, interviewed by Renee Richardson from the KFOG Morning Show, here we go, g Easy. Welcome, g Easy. Oakland native. Yeah, yeah, East Bay. East Bay native, and uh, yeah, hello. <laughs> People should know on the topic that just finished up in here that your education background, what did you go to school for? Oh, college? Music yeah. industry studies. Music industry yeah. studies. And, but yet you're a rapper, you're a producer, yeah. you're a reinterpreter of the past, as yeah. I like to say. Yeah, I'm just an internet <laughs> kid, computer kid that grew up, you know, just making stuff. And uh, I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. So when I went to school, I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to stay in Oakland and I wanted to be a rapper. Mm. Um, but I went for, yeah, music industry studies and that put the marketing side and the entrepreneurial side to the music and, you know, help me figure out how to get it in front of people and how to, you know, monetize it and turn it into something real. And to do that for yourself. Now, so you're talking about social media. You're talking about your music. How important is it to, as those guys were talking about, offer up the free stuff? Tell me about your marketing strategy yeah. and how, how it does work. Well, that's, that's just the world we live in. I mean, you have a, a generation of people now who've never paid for music. I mean, you know, if there's a, you know, 17-year-old kid going to a show, LimeWire was, you know, what, 1998 or whatever, 99, yeah. 2000, 2001, whatever. Um, I mean, that's, you know, a whole lifetime of, of never buying music, of never looking at that as an item you go to a store and actually buy. Um, so you have to, you know, obviously it all starts with free. And um, you continue to, like they were saying, you know, put stuff in front of them. And build that uh, brand loyalty through constantly releasing content and, you know, putting it in front of people. Um, you are going to have an album coming out. These Things Happen comes out yeah. on June 23rd. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, it's a little old fashioned, I guess, like selling an album now and thinking about that. But I've given so much free stuff away through the years and we've turned that into, you know, a lot of tours and been able to, you know, sell a lot of merch and all that. But through the constantly giving out so much content, mixtapes and free songs and music videos, uh, you've kind of had this like saved up, you know, button we're ready to push in yeah. terms of like, OK, I gave you this. Now I need you to help me out and, you know, go to the store and, or, you know, download it really. And, uh, and to be on board, which is what a fan yeah. will do, because you've built that fan base yeah. organically. But it comes to, you know, developing that over time, like you said, and, um, you know, that brand loyalty of just, you know, you give them enough so that when you ask them to do you the favor, that they're right there. Um, one of the things you were known for is a reworking of an old song, Run Around Sue. Talk to me about that for a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, initially... I was sampling and remixing a lot of music because I'm not like all that traditionally trained and it helped, you know, learning how to create music from scratch. You know, if I've remixed something else or like sampled it or whatever. And, uh, you know, so I, I don't know. I've always been into this idea of contrast and juxtaposition of, you know, completely different worlds. So taking something that, you know, my mom grew up listening to and would play around the house, uh, chopping that sample and looping it and putting 808 drums underneath it you know, and halftime in the drums and turning it into something contemporary, you know, and just, just that contrast of the two worlds and yeah. creating something new. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up with you was social media. I mean, to this crowd, you're very comfortable in this crowd because you've spent a lot of time, you've been on every, well, tell me about how you market your music. You, you use everything that's available to you, I can imagine, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they were saying just a minute ago, it's like you have to constantly be in front of your fans communicating uh whether that's you know delivering content but just every tweet every every instagram every facebook post is a representation of your brand is putting you in front of people reminding them hey i'm here and there's so much going on obviously um and there's so much noise that you know it's important to constantly keep that conversation going 
and to you know to stay in front of people how how much is too much and how much is too little like how much of your time your daily time is spent would you say connecting again with the fans yeah well it's important because i in my opinion one thing is extremely important it's not to be forgotten is that you know you have to d- dedicate enough of the time creating the content so in my case it's like i have to be living experiencing writing recording working on music to give them stuff and not just you know on my phone checking twitter responding to people talking yeah. marketing stuff all day long because you have to actually you know play that role too but um in terms of just like pushing mm-hmm. tweets and stuff like that, yeah, you don't want to be too noisy or right. too selly, pushy. So when you like, do, so either. when you do offer something, it's something of value and of content. Yeah, yeah, right on. Um, what else do you want to talk about? Anybody here inspire you since you've gotten here? Um, I just yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guys that we're talking right okay. before, <laughs> yeah, the people that were just sitting here. Mm-hmm. Um, well, G E Z. Right, how long do we have? Anybody want to ask questions in the audience? Because this is a good time for that, because I think we have the time for it. And there should be a mic runner somewhere. Here he comes. Hi, g My name is Maya. How are you? I'm pretty good. I want to know, how do you feel about going on tour with Kid Cudi? Oh, we're just doing one show this Friday. Yeah, I wish I was doing the whole tour. That'd be fun. Um, no, but Kid Cudi is somebody you know, I've listened to for years and have been a fan of. Um, I don't know. It's just dope when yeah, everything I've done has, has been so homemade, DIY, internet-grown, homemade, you know what I mean, as could be. I've, you know, I've always recorded and made everything in, in my house. You know, I, don't, I don't like big studios. Or anything. So it's like this DIY approach, you know, growing and building organically and then finally reaching the gatekeepers, reaching the, you know, the, the, the big leagues, you know, and them paying attention to what we're doing and starting to break through and transcend into that world, you know, and, you know, those transitions are, you know, are cool. Uh, yeah. Are you coming to the show? <laughs> right on. Where is it? Is that uh, Bill Graham? Bill Graham. Bill Graham, Friday night. Mm. Woohoo. Um, anybody else? There's a hand over here. Uh, hi, Jeezy. Can you uh, tell us about some of the platforms that you've been using? I mean, I know you're super, really active uh, mm-hmm. with uh, a lot of the uh, technology companies, and you you know embrace them. Can you talk about like you know kind of like the Spotify's and Tumblers and and how you view using those platforms? Yeah. Um, well, it's important to be active across the board. I mean, there's people with you know may have a million Instagram followers, you know, but if if that's the only community that you appeal to and you don't have the SoundCloud followers or the people following you for the you know, for your music or also your Twitter or, you know, if you were really popular when Facebook was at its peak and now that that's dying, you know, your followers aren't following you to the you know, to the next one's on point. But it's yeah, I mean it's important to be across the board and um I don't know, we've got a good relationship with Spotify and they've shown us a lot of love and um we did this like Spotify spotlight artist thing and they had like five up and coming artists like compete for this thing and uh, I don't know, we won that and they put us on the homepage which is tight. <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump in with a question there. Is the audience different for each of the different platforms? Like do you find you reach a new audience because you've gone a certain way? Uh, yeah, no, sometimes. There's different yeah. communities. It depends, but yeah. I saw a hand over here. Where's the? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Um, can you point to a certain moment or maybe a gig that got you from that point that you're just sort of um, gigging locally to your first yeah. tour? Yeah. Because um, tipping points are important, and and they happen in multiple stages. And you know, I think what it comes down to in today's world is you know, there's everything is so noisy. And everyone's got an idea and everyone's got the tools to turn that into something tangible. So it's, it's you know, with, with always staying true to yourself and being authentic with everything, still finding a way to stand out some and, um, you know, stick out from the noise. I mean, and, and be, create something remarkable, worth talking about, you know, and not just, you know, something that gets lost in the sea of everything. Um, I'd say the first point we had 
was the, I don't know, like three or four years ago, um, I had saved up like two grand and me and one of my best friends who was doing music videos uh, worked really hard on this idea for a music video. I had remixed this song called Run Around Sue and we, I don't know, we worked for a long time on the treatment for the video uh, and with a bootstrap budget, you know, we brought this video to life and when we finally, you know, finished putting it together, we did our homework and made sure, I, I, what I did at the time was I looked up every music blog I wanted to be on mm -hmm. and I would find the writer at that blog that would write about similar stuff to what I was making and if they didn't have their email public on the blog, I would stalk them, I would Google their name, <laughs> find, a, find a Facebook or find an email. But anyway, to, to reach out to that writer to say, hey, you know, you have this audience and if I could reach two dozen blogs, you know, then at least this wouldn't just be me saving all this money, working so hard on creating this content and then uploading it to deaf ears and just posting it to my Facebook page with my 700 friends or whatever, that it would reach people, that, that at least if I created something that was worth talking about, it could at least be put in front of people at this stage. I know I couldn't get on MTV, I couldn't get on the radio, but the blogs were attainable. Uh, and then from there, you know, the ones that wrote about it, I'd, I'd write back and you know, say thank you for posting my little video to develop the relationship. And that was the first step. I mean, in today's world, a music video is the most shareable, digestible piece of content. You know, if I say, oh, hey, download my album, I don't know who the fuck you are. I'm not going to download your shit. I'm on my phone. No. <laughs> but if you say a music video and it's got a cool thumbnail, like, yeah. hey, you, you, you might get my 30 seconds attention. And if yeah. it's good, I might watch the whole thing. You know, so it starts with a music video. And from there, I put out a, a mixtape, like a free album, shortly after that. Like a month later, while I still, you know, the writers still remembered who I was and I wrote to them and, you know, would reach more people then. And, um, and it was all, the whole project was me remixing a lot of like, you know, uh, 60s pop songs. Um, and, you know, there was a whole, you know, look with that. And it, 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 it like, it stood out, you know, it was like, who is, you know, who is this rapper with slick back hair? you know, like remixing all these 60s songs. And it, you know, it, it was something to, to talk about. It was a little different. And, you know, from there it was like, okay, I had, I had some attention from that. I got um, uh, a, a booking agent and he uh, took a chance on me. I mean, I had no draw. I wasn't really, you know, I could play local shows, but, and he put me on my first tour as a first of three. And from there it was like, okay, same thing with the blogs. Now you have this opportunity and this chance to get some attention. How can you steal these fans that aren't there for you? They don't know who the hell you are. How can you surprise them and make them walk away to start talking about you to people, you know, so that maybe when you come back on your next tour, you have people come out and see you. Um, and then it, it, was, it was, again, it was back to the content and making sure that the thing is every time when you're creating something, uh, once you hire the, you know, the crew and rent the cameras or whatever you do to create your idea, you know, it, you create it and it's tangible and it lives and there's only so much you could do to change it to make it better. But in the, in the pre-production stages, you have this freedom to, you know, rework the idea and chisel away at it. And before you bring it to life, make it something great, you know, before you spend any money on it. So with each project, we would put that amount of attention and detail into it and for us it was always music videos and uh artwork to go along with free singles to upload to soundcloud so you know free content a ton of it to mixtapes all kind of luring people into this funnel you know so you send all this free content out with the hopes of turning them into fans that you can retain for a long time and ultimately monetize that market through touring and merchandise and now with the album I'm putting out this summer is the first time after years of free music and, and, and tours that have all sold out and done really well being like, okay, here's where I need you. You know, we've built this independently, organically through the internet. Let's shock the world because there's still a little bit of that left that if we sell 40,000 records first week, all of a sudden the billboards and the MTVs and all of, you know, the gatekeepers mm -hmm. still kind of, they do, they do still exist. The radio, all that still kind of matters. They pay attention 
And they're like, okay, what the hell's going on here? Who the fuck is this kid? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Radio does still matter. Just Sorry. It still matters. <laughs> I love so, saying that. So I am so hate to say that we're out of time, but this was great. Let's have a big hand for Renee and GEZ. You will be hearing a lot more about him. We would love to have you back. Really appreciate it. He's a nerd. Go talk to him yeah. about your tech.